All right. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. All right. So as we welcome people in, I'll probably say this more than once, but welcome to the Everything True Cinema Podcast. Let me get my hair ready for you guys. Check out my fit. Black t-shirt. As usual, I am joined with Sean Mackinich and Aaron Stover, right? We've kind of discussed how those guys have uh, major roles in what we do. Uh, Sean is an actor, producer. Um, he's worked with me behind the scenes as well. And Aaron is the guy I go to for um, when I'm pitching stories. In fact, I just pitched one to him while we were setting up. So um, I feel very honored to have these guys helping me every week and being a part of this because they're not, I mean, they help me, but this is really their thing too. And we've been trying to figure out like, what is our, what is our, like, what do we do here? What is our flow? Um, and, and we're trying to find our voice because obviously you guys know that there's a lot of ways that people communicate on these podcasts and stuff. And we're trying to figure out what unique voice we have. And so we've come up with some segments that aren't unique to us, but I think there these opinions will be, and that's what's exciting to me. So um, wanted to start out with a few topics that that um, a few things that have happened since last week that we're excited about. Also, for those of you that tuned in last week, last Friday when we did our ghost hunt, thank you very much for hanging out. It was a lot of fun. Um, it was kind of weird, kind of in a weird abrupt ending um but it was a good time so uh i think we may do that again we might find another location that's creepy um something that has a history of of being haunted and wander around in there and check it out um i think it was it was pretty interesting sean's falling asleep guys i'm not sure what's wrong with him i feel like i need to get him a diet coke or something just for, um, I'm just relaxing. Please. All right. So, anyway, um, first thing I wanted to talk to you guys about, and this is just a very simple conversation, and it'll only take a minute, but I think I pitched you a while ago. I have this idea for a movie. It's very, very simple. The idea, almost 90, 95% of the movie takes place in a, in a car. And I'm thinking that the lead actor is like an Uber driver or something like that. And what happens is, is that we he ends up picking up somebody, and I'm thinking that she has to be like this young woman or something, and he is instructed by like the mob or some powerful under you know underbelly or some some somebody that's like I want you to deliver this person. Maybe she's got a bag of something of value or something like that. But his job is to get this person across the city in an hour. And so we are kind of living this movie with him over the course of this hour as he drives from one side of the city to the other. And they've made it very, it's, he is compelled to do what he's supposed to because they know where his family is, but she's trying to explain why she, he needs to help her. And so I'm not sure how this all comes together, but there's this, the idea of doing like a Hitchcock type thriller maybe a little bit of of um action in some in some way you know there's got to be that payoff at the end of course but where this guy is literally torn you know between he you know he's got his family and then he's got this person and the only way that he can decide what he's going to do is somebody might lose and obviously that can't happen so that's really the that kind of idea. So I don't know if that's any good or not, but it's been in my head for a couple of months now. And I just, I love the idea of this guy just driving across and he can't stop. He cannot stop. He, you know, it's, and he's hearing this information and it's more and more compelling and he wants to help this young person, but you know, his, his own life and his family are at stake. So, um, to have that ultimate decision that you've got to make and you've only got a short time to do it, I think sounds very interesting to me. Yeah. So, so is she, can I ask some questions about your idea? I'm happy to answer them. I just, I'm not sure well, if well, I have them myself well, here, yet. So like, so, so he's being compelled to do this at the risk of his family. And the person is driving 
doesn't want him to do it. She wants him, him to help her do something. Well, he's too. the driver. Right. So, um, I meant first, the person he's driving. She's, she's like, get me out of here. You she don't know what I'm, right. you know. And and the whole thing, too, is it's got to be kind of vague. It's got to be, we can't really know what she's doing or what she's responsible for. Or if she's telling the truth. Or mm-hmm. if she's telling yeah. the truth. Is this a setup? Yeah. You know? A little bit of speed there. A little bit of glide. Exactly. Exactly. And, again, you know, you're, you're kind of doing this in real time, you know. And that's kind of the fun thing, too. There's been a couple of horror movies where... The whole movie is kind of shot in one long take. Mm-hmm. Now, we know that there's always a, like two or three breaks somewhere. For sure. But if you can find a way to do that, like, it, it keeps be, that tension. It definitely <laughs> keeps that tension. So, yeah, I, I've been thinking about that. I think that, you know, it's something that could be really cool. You need to, you know, to like, start out with the stakes and then raise them and raise them. Exactly. And you you gotta, know, you got to have a time. Oh yeah, you just that's like, the thing. You know, the watch is he just sees that thing ticking and he's just like, I have time for this. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe she has to rush out. I have time like, for this. No, we're not stopping. By the end of the movie, then kill the baby or something. No, it's him. He's got it. He's got If you guys have any ideas about that, don't forget to uh, you know, shoot him our way, because I'm curious about that too. I don't know. Um I'm not sure what it is yet but if you guys have ideas or thoughts make sure you uh you let me know um so that's one thing uh let's see also quick reminder you guys for on may 1st through may 4th uh, which is only a couple of weeks away now we're going to be shooting those scenes for that horror movie and i i i'm reminding you guys because you guys are going to get to be there behind the scenes. It's going to be crazy. You guys are going to be right there with me while I'm directing the talent, while we're setting up the scenes, we're setting up the lighting. We're going to see the locations. You guys will be there when we see the locations and start setting things up. So don't forget, I'm, there's going to be a lot of day shoots on that one, which is kind of nice for us. But, you know, doesn't mean you can't check in if you're working. Check in on your lunch break or whatever. Come and watch for 10 or 15 minutes if you want to and see how things are going and watch how a movie's made. And what's really cool about that too, you guys, is that when this movie comes out, you guys will have been there seeing behind the scenes and see what happens. And I promise I'll also show as I'm editing it what you watched us do live, what that becomes. So... That's pretty cool. It's, it's pretty, pretty neat. Yeah, pretty neat experience. I know Sean's going to be there. Yeah. I know Aaron's been invited to participate when he's available, if he is. So, yeah, that's exciting. Um, we're going to do mailbag here in a little bit. We've got a really cool review coming up from Aaron. We've developed a couple of new segments for this. One is Aaron's Corner Review. Aaron sees more movies than I do, I think, at this point, which I think is wonderful. <laughs> And he I, saw a I can't pretty big. That's true. Maybe, maybe not, but at least lately because we we've, we've been so busy. But Aaron saw a new movie that's very popular right now, and I'm thrilled to hear and anxious to hear what he has to say. And I think you guys are going to want to hear it too because he has a very interesting perspective on how um, stories are told getting, and things like that. We're getting a little feedback saying our sound is really loud and it's echoing or something. Really loud and echoing. We do yeah. have two microphones. Thank you for letting us know, guys. We'll take a look at it. Yeah, let's. We need a we need a technical difficulty uh, icon. It's simple. Um, we're, we're working on it. We are working on it. So is that Amanda? Maybe they're too close to each other. Maybe they should get feedback. Are we still getting feedback? Thank you, guys, for letting when us we know. We move stuff. How did that that do anything? Did that do anything? Maybe it's too close to Thor because it's not doing it for the other guys. Okay. So it's Thor's so Thor is too loud. Okay. Uh, oh, he just turned it down on him. How's that? Is that better? Check, check, check. Now let us know if it's check. too quiet now. Yeah. Maybe it's because Thor's voice carries. Yeah. Tuck this in here behind. Well, him. she said it's not ours. So that's right, but it might just be him carrying over the. Well, until we hear something, we're going to keep going, guys. If you uh, have any input, make sure you let us know. Yep. Um, she just says it has an echo. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know about that mic. 
I don't know why this mic is all of a sudden a problem because I've been using it for three months. Yeah, but never on this device. Mm, interesting. Interesting. Well, that's why I'm wondering if it went through the focus right with that even it out. You can't because it's a USB. Well, is it too distracting to continue? I mean, if Thor is talking. I mean, we can unplug it and use the center one, but I, you guys complained about that too. Let's. I'd say let's try it. Let's try it, and I'll try to bring in those. I forgot to. Bring, I've got some. Uh, turn that other one off real quick. So it, I, it I muted it here. How's how's that? She says that sounds better. Now, Thor, why don't you talk? Make sure she can hear you. Um, the next thing we uh, we've got some sad news in the uh, film industry it's uh it's very sad it's kind of heartbreaking honestly but you know i mean it's going to happen we know it's going to happen but francis ford coppola's wife who some of you may know as the woman that did the documentary i i believe it's called the heart uh and the heart of darkness the documentary that she did while he was doing um what is that movie where he was down like the philippines or whatever uh, I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Oh, Apocalypse Now. Yes, Apocalypse Now. So when Coppola was doing that, his wife was doing a documentary about him doing that film. And it's pretty intense. I've seen it a couple of times, and she was pretty brilliant, obviously. Um, sadly, she passed away this week at the age of 83. I don't have any other details, not that we need them, but she's obviously gone. And that's very sad because, you know, that family is royalty in Hollywood now and a very iconic family. And, you know, he's got his new movie coming out here shortly. Yep. And, and it's, it's, I mean, there's never a good time for somebody you love to, to pass away, obviously, but I do feel for the man because, you know, he was with this woman, his partner for, I'm guessing around 60 years mm -hmm. You know, being that they're in their mid eighties, and uh, you know they raise families together, and and uh, you know she was a lifelong partner of his, and right now as he begins to go into um, the sales of his new movie that he has financed himself using his vineyard vineyards as collateral, um, you know this is going to be a very hard time with him. Also, Can is coming up for those of you that are interested in that. The Cannes Film Festival over in France is coming up, and that is a, France. a big, big deal for filmmakers that have movies over there. They usually get, you know, if they're any good, they get picked up. I'm sure that movie's going to get picked up. We're talking about, I believe it's pronounced Mega, it's not Metropolis, it's Megalopolis. Megalopolis. Yeah. Yes. Megalopolis, yeah. And, um, it's got a very, very cool premise. I read more about it this week. It's got some very, very amazing actors in it. I just don't see how it can be a bad film, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I don't know. And maybe it will be. Who knows? But it's literally his, his opus. It's like his, his life dream, I think. Yes, he's been film. working on writing on this movie for decades. Yeah. Finally got himself into a, a position where it can be made. Made it himself, financed it himself, and got, you know, the, the most talented actors in the world to be a part of it. And I, for one, can't wait to see it. I know that eventually it's going to be seen. I just hope it isn't a movie that goes to streaming. You know, I hope oh, yeah. that it gets the, you know, the opportunity that it certainly deserves. I can't see how they would. We did get a mailbag question about it. If you want to jump to it. Sure. Uh, someone brought it up. Meg Mega Megalopolis has no suitors. at can't, you, you know what I I've heard about this because, um, and I did a little bit of research. So, what I've heard is that because it is such a pricey film, they know, and it's so odd, it doesn't have a, a, a normal structure, apparently. So it's very unusual. And for that, because, you know, the state of, you know, retention for the normal person anymore, people can't sit through a movie unless it's, you know. So um, it's going to take a, a certain kind of art house um feel i think i think you know there's going to be certain people that can appreciate it and there's going to be a lot more that don't and i think they're afraid to pour another hundred million into a movie yeah. that they don't think is going to make any money which is 
really sad, you guys, because this could be a real piece of art for years and years to come, I would imagine. You know? I just can't see how someone would. Well, at least the posters all look like it's setting itself up to be somehow related to the old movie Metropolis, mm -hmm. which was a classic. Sci -fi I mean, it was one of the first sci fi movies ever. It was a huge, huge success. Uh, one of the first uh, advanced uses of special effects and the ways that did the things it did. And Megalopolis, I, I don't know anything about the plot. All I've seen is a few visuals. It looks amazing. Yeah, I know uh, Talia, his sister Talia Shire is in it, which is kind of cool because she doesn't do a lot, nope. you know. So it's going to be kind of fun to see her do something again. I'm, I'm, I would be interest interested to see anything that she does since she really hasn't done anything in like 20 years. Oh, I would too. And I'm, I'm, yes, and I'm interested to see something that a man of his caliber. This is what he believes in so much. <laughs> he put 120 million of his own money. Yeah. Doesn't even care. Doesn't even care. Yeah. You know, because it just had to be made. Had to be made. And and that I just that alone, it's we need to see this. But to Thor's point, it, it seems like there's this whole industry around marketing movies that really just doesn't know what the hell it's doing most of the time. Doesn't know. And I'm not saying I'm blaming them because it's really hard. It's hard to know who's going to be into what. Like, Lord of the Rings was a huge hit, but did they know going in that this weird little book that has this cult like following uh, where people, you know, learn to speak Elvish and memorize passages like it's the Bible was, was going to be able to draw that kind of a, a market? And, and then along comes Iron Man which kicks off the biggest film franchise of all time. Um, did they know that this, you know, third tier superhero? They did not. No, I'm they didn't. Sure they and didn't how know. did they get that word out? The, the truth of the matter is when it comes to marketing a film successfully, Hollywood's marketing mechanisms are almost peripheral to success of the movie. Like a movie that's gonna be a hit is gonna be a hit. And what'd you say that they spend, they, they plan on spending somewhere near the budget of the movie on marketing, yep, and it, it's almost like it's almost like that's just something they feel like they have to do. Because I've I've seen I remember like this Adam Driver movie that came out last year where he travels back to BC, and it was a huge. Are, are we talking about the? It was like Nights, and it was a Ridley Scott film. Is that? The was it really, no, it was one. It's like it was the year, the year of like oh, the dinosaur. Oh, 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 yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. And they marketed, sixteen. Yeah, they marketed the hell out of it. Mm -hmm. It flopped. It looked like a shitty movie, mm -hmm. and it looked like the people that they were trying to sell it to would look at that ad and say, "This is going to be a shitty movie." And it's like you can predict what's going to flop, and sometimes they shelved movies before that because they're like, "Oh, this," is but it, 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 it's almost I don't know. It's almost like they just don't have faith in the movie going public to siss out what's going to be a decent movie. Well, I think, you know, we talked about that a little bit last week with Monkey Man. So, yeah. the movie that's got a... Another great example. I think it had a, a $30 million budget. Um, yeah. With uh, Peel, Jordan Def, Peele. Jeff Patel, I think, yes. was in the lead. Yep. Jordan Peele bought it or something. He it convinced Paramount to buy it. I believe it's Paramount mm -hmm. for ten million from Netflix, who was just they just were gonna put it on streaming. And it I believe it made well over the thirty million dollar budget in the first weekend alone. Mm -hmm. And I would love to see it. I haven't had the opportunity. I did see a movie this weekend, but I was with my little boy, so I couldn't take him to that. Mm -hmm. But um, I plan to see it. I think it's going to be a great movie, and I've heard nothing but really good things about it. If you're into that kind of stuff, yeah, yeah. a very cultural movie. Also, I mean, let's let's not make it what it's not. I mean, it is an action revenge story, but yeah. it's told in a different way. I love the John Wick movies, but this is supposed to be more, I think, uh, about the Indian culture and kind of their their. Um, Beliefs and things like that. So I'm sure it's going to be Maybe very interesting. Yes. Like another, another one, like Green Knight. Uh, great movie. Yes. Um, Love that movie. O 
over advertised. Like if it didn't make money, it didn't make money because they advertised it too much. Like the people who saw it were going to see it anyway. Now, was that an A24 film? Good question. I want to talk about that because, and I think I think I'm right. Maybe I'm not, but I feel, and that certainly has the feel of an A24 movie. Um, we're talking about the Green Knight for those of you that um, so are coming good. in late. It was a beautiful movie. So um, but anyway, so, well, before we go into that, let's break away from the mailbag for a second because I want we to. We dove in ahead. We're, we got to come back. We yeah. got to come back. Yep. Uh, so Aaron saw a movie this yes. weekend. Okay. The, this is all going to tie together. You guys will see. Follow along. Um, I want to talk with Aaron for a little bit because he went to see a movie this weekend, has some thoughts. I have not seen it yet, so I'm eager to hear what he's thinking. So, Aaron, why don't you go ahead and take over and tell tell us what you saw and give us a, sure. a once-over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, so this was – you guys were out doing the ghost hunt, which is why I couldn't make it. My uh, standard – He's afraid of ghosts. I am a little bit afraid of ghosts. Um, every, <laughs> every Friday night we have a standing uh, family dinner night. Um, so and my kids couldn't make it, so I turned down into, into date night. So my wife and I went out for a really nice dinner, and then afterward we decided to go catch a movie. Uh, here in Des Moines, we've got this awesome theater that reopened over by uh, Drake University, uh, which is now operating as a not-for-profit cinema. Uh, so what was playing there was the new Civil War movie, um, and so that's what we saw. Um, it was kind of on my list anyway. Uh, just I thought it looked like a really interesting movie. Um, for those of you that don't know, that is the new Kirsten Dunst film, correct? Yeah, so it's Kirsten Dunst, and I did not know this. My wife had to tell me that her husband, Jesse uh, Plemons, uh, I, uh, he said they met on the set probably a far ago. I believe that's or true. That's maybe when they got married. Um, and I love Jesse Plemons. I've always, especially uh, um, when he plays these, these character roles, uh, he's always one of my favorites. For those of you that don't know, he was the the weird or the odd. Um, I what I can't remember. I think his character was Todd in Breaking Bad. Yeah. Um, so yes, brilliant actor. Yeah. Please so continue. and he was he was brilliant in this one too. Um, so the premise of the movie is that America is in a civil war. Uh, it comes out in you know a little exposition in the first quarter of the movie that uh, the president is at least in his third term or his fourth term. Um, and America is divided into sort of three or four factions. Uh, the United States is um, sort of uh, New England and uh, and West up through um, the, the Great Plains uh, into the northern mountain states. Uh, and then there's a, a California and um, Texas have formed a country. Uh, and then there's a group. Uh, like California and Texas. Interesting. It's definitely kind of a fantasy story. It is. And but <laughs> I'll come back to that in a second. And then Florida, there's a, something called the Florida Alliance uh, that is Florida and a lot of the other southern states. And then there's sort of the balance of the country. Um, that's, uh, and together they're known as the Western Alliance. And they are in a war against the United States and what's left of the traditional military of the, the U.S. Um, and our protagonist and our story is centered on uh, Kristen Dunst, who is sort of a, a, a war journalist. Photojournalist, right? Well, she's a photojournalist, um, and she's uh, at least got a, a strong history. I think she uh, it's mentioned at one point she had a piece or something uh, for uh, war journalism. Okay. And... Um, and they're in New York getting ready. Uh, they're reporting on some sort of a, a civil unrest. Um, peripheral of the story just sort of gets us started. And they're getting ready to drive to D.C. Uh, to try to catch an interview with the president before the war ends in what is uh, portrayed as the inevitable defeat of the uh, United States government. Wow. So this is this is our setup. Okay. And I'm not really spoiling anything yet. I'm not going to spoil anything, um, except to say that 
the heart of the story is the journey to DC and uh, the climax of the story is in their arrival and the unfolding of those last minutes of the war, however it plays out. Okay. Um, well, tell us what you thought. What I you thought think? it was one of the most thought-provoking movies I've seen in a while. Uh, whether you think it's stupid <laughs> or brilliant, I found myself thinking about it a few days later, which is unusual uh, for me to still be you know, wrestling with the themes of the movie a couple of days later. Um, Kristen Dunst gives a fantastic performance. Uh, Kaylee Spaney, I think was her name, um, who played uh, Priscilla Presley in the movie Priscilla, which I was underwhelmed by, uh, but I loved her in it. Uh, plays this young woman who is uh, an aspiring photojournalist who idolizes the Kirsten Dunst character and um, grabs a ride with them. Uh, so she's sort of our outsider, uh, fresh face, hasn't, hasn't seen the horrors of war, uh, is being thrown into prominence. Gotcha. Uh, so we get a lot of stuff from her perspective and we get a lot of her reactions to things uh, as, as we see them because Kirsten Dunst playing the torn photojournalist isn't going to give us those reactions. Um, well, so like, would you recommend it? Who would you recommend it for? Would, what's your What's your score? Uh, I don't have a scoring mechanism. <laughs> I mean, we, well, a, I B, C, D, one, two, three, four, I five stars. I super duper enjoyed it, and uh, I would absolutely recommend it for anybody who who likes movies that make them think about politics. Um, but it's like it's not a date movie, like. One of my first dates as a young man, I took, I took a young woman to see a movie, and uh, we picked Mississippi Burning. Ooh. Okay, terrible date movie. Uh -huh. This is also a terrible date movie for a young couple's looking to, I you know, one. like, this isn't going to inspire you to cuddle. Um, <laughs> the, the worst date movie I ever had was The Fly 2. Oh, gosh. Um, what was that's I just about as bad. Yeah, no. So bad. Yeah, Miss, yeah Mississippi, Mississippi Burning. So, so it's, it's not that movie, right? So if like I, we've got a friend, Justin. Justin only likes comedies. This I would not recommend this movie to Justin. Right. I recommend this movie to anybody who uh, is concerned about the current state of affairs and is interested in thinking harder about it. Uh, the producers. I saw something from the producers where they said that the the whole thing about the the California Texas alliance was to not portray this as a blue states, red states divide. Gotcha. You did it there. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that yeah. this is um, a president who became a totalitarian and forced a situation where the states didn't want to allow it. And they never give the details of how that unfolded, except to say that he was in his third or fourth term as the U.S. president. All right. We're going to move on from this for a little bit because I don't want to give too much away, but I will tell you this, and I want your opinions about this. It is being reported that this is A24's biggest opening weekend for one of their movies since the studio launched. Nice. Why do you guys think that is? Well, well Nick Offerman is clearly channeling Donald Trump, and it's election year. Yeah, it's, it's the top end. It's interesting yeah. interesting very good guys well that's cool do we have anything else in the mailbag and also aaron awesome work on that thanks yeah, sure. buddy happy to do it uh yeah the mailbag did, 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 mailbag first question is what do you think of the blair witch reboot oh what the okay. blair witch reboot sorry sorry say again what the blair <laughs> Which <laughs> reboot? I am unaware of this. Yes. Yeah, so it was included. just um, mentioned in this last week. Um, I believe it's Blumhouse. Okay. Is going to do a reboot of the Blair Witch. Don't really know much more about it than that at this time. Um, I would say they've got their work cut out for them because this is a movie that's. It's not going to be easy to redo found footage. This is the real footage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, one of the one of the great things about the Blair Witch Project, in my opinion, was how well that movie was marketed. Yeah. They did it in a very unique way, yeah. a very brilliant way. That you know, for a very long time, I believed that the Blair Witch was was a thing. Yeah. 
Um, sure. So uh, I had to be told maybe a year later or something that that, that it was actually just part of their marketing. Sure. So um, also a terrible thing. Yes. So if you take that away, I don't know how we're going to be invested in this again, knowing that this is a reboot of something else. I don't know if you can do a found footage thing again. I don't know if that works anymore. Um, what do you think? They'll just go the other way and go bigger budget. I, I, I hope not no special effect. because no. that was one of the cool things about that movie yeah. was how it looked. It felt you like you were watching. That. Yeah. I, I, and Blue House does it on the cheap usually. They do. They so, do. I'm guessing that they want to do all that. They'll so try for it. those of you joining us, um, if you haven't heard, they're going to be doing a, re, a reboot of the Blair Witch Project. It has been greenlit by the Bloomhouse folks. So if you're into horror films, you've probably seen the, that studio's movies anyway. And uh, we don't have a lot of details about it yet. But I will tell you that I'm curious. For sure. I think, you know, it's to this day, when people such as myself are talking to potential investors in their films, there is not a movie that is more universally used as a, if you could just give us $30,000, we can turn that into $100 million, yeah, which sure. is what happened. And uh, I'll never forget, I think it was Chris Rock that said, what did they use that $30,000 on? Catering? <laughs> <laughs> so I were probably lying. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I mean, they were not the first found footage movie ever, but they, the were, one they, of, presented they were one of the first to, to do it effectively. And they, they're definitely elevated the, the genre. Like, I, saw um, a, I would love to see one that was done before then. I, I, and I believe you. I just, I, it's hard for me to I even think imagine. Were some, I don't know. But like two weeks ago, I went and saw uh, Late Night with the Devil, uh, which was the latest in a whole lot of found footage movies. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was good. And it was presented. I'm hearing that, way, that it's really good. But it wasn't cheap. I mean, so it wasn't. I, speaking of movies, new movies, I don't know. Have either one of you seen the new Joker trailer? And does anybody care? Does anybody care about the new Joker movie with Lady Gaga? I haven't, seen, I haven't seen the preview though. You haven't? Huh. It's supposed to be a musical. Oh. And um, I've heard that it has 18 standards in it. Have you seen <sighs> the music? Have you seen the. Uh, well, they're standards, so the they've been around. The People's Joker? Uh uh. coming out this year, and it is not a DC property, uh, a law-breaking comedian who is grappling with her gender identity forms a new anti-comedy troupe with a friend and finds herself battling a fantastic caped crusader. Somebody took the IP and ran with it parody style, I guess. Interesting. But I, I, see, I saw the preview for that, but I've uh, not seen the guy. Well, check that out. Let me know what you think. Wow. Yeah, um, musical. So I was telling Aaron a long, long, long time ago, comedian um, Jim Gaffigan had made a joke on stage about how, has anybody ever seen a movie like 10 years after it was popular and then everybody looked at him like he was crazy? Me. Yeah. I'm always watching movies late. <laughs> well, yeah, and and he goes, and then he, the punchline went to this joke was, "Hey guys, have you seen Heat?" <laughs> and it's only, I mean, that's funny because at the time the movie was like ten years old. Right. Yeah. Fast forward to tonight, Aaron gets here, I'm getting set up, and he comes in a little early to set up, so we have a time to you know plan and talk and blah blah blah. And he goes, I just saw a movie last night called Heat. <laughs> like, well, that's great, man. You, you, you've seen it again. He's like, no, but I've seen it for the first time. It's been on my list. It's been on my list. So, yeah, it's a great movie. If you came haven't out, seen like, it, you should see it. Came out in it's almost 30 years old, <laughs> but it is a classic. Robert De Niro, um, Al Pacino. I mean, the list goes on yeah. and on and on. Henry Rollins is in the movie. Yeah, uh, Henry Rollins. 
Uh, uh, John Voight. Um, a lot of great actors. So, yeah, if you haven't seen it, check it out. If Ashley you haven't Judd. seen it in a while, Ashley Judd. Um, what's his name? Great actor, Bill, uh, Val Kilmer. When he was, like, <laughs> pretty much at the height of his... Oh, oh, yes, yes. Danny Trejo of Trejo's Donuts. Nice. Um, if you guys don't follow Very Danny Trejo on TikTok, you guys should because it's awesome. He is so funny. He's, he's in there. Great. He's a great guy. Yep. Um, but, yeah, the cast, I mean, there's probably 30 people deep of, of people that maybe you don't know. They're, they're not household names, but when you see them, you know they're great actors. So... Um, wanted to discuss that, so he got to see that movie and enjoyed it. That was awesome. Sean also um, has been watching the new Fallout series. How's that going? I'm I'm really happy, you know, because it's it's one of those things where you know I, I'm a I'm a fall, I'm a Fallout I'm a play Fallout I play yeah. Fallout from the beginning, and so I'm definitely a, a, a fan. And you know, I was nervous because. Could have really been bad, you know, um, but it's not. They they did they did a really. I think they did a good job. I mean, there's some things. If you're not if you're not a if you're not a fan of it now, if you don't play Fallout now, it might be a little harder for you. Yeah. I feel because there's a lot of inside jokes, and they just dump you into this world that is. Um, it's a it's it's really cool. A fictional world, kind of. Like it's in the 1950s and the way that people talk and dress and the way things look and the style and the way they talk. But it's where history kind of deviated and uh, um, we focus more on different technologies. So it kind of has a weird almost like it's not steampunk. It's its own thing. It's kind of like its own. It's like steampunk, but it's all around nuclear technology. Yeah. So there's like nuclear, there's house robots and they all run on nuclear fusion, you know, little cells, you know, things like that. But uh, so it just throws you in there without explanation, which I like that. But, you know, for some people getting started, if they didn't know the background, it might be a little much. But um, I think it's, I think it's great. And the actors in it are fantastic. The girl who's playing the lead, what's her name? Like Ella. So for those coming in, you guys were talking about the new series, Ella Fallout. Purnell. Ella Purnell. She's and really good. She, she's good, and, 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 they're, and they're doing a good job with this story. I mean, they're actually actually seeing her develop. You're who's seeing the, who's her. the guy that plays your dad? He was in the Dune in the 80s. Oh, her dad. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's I'm looking, I'm looking. He's the guy from Blue Velvet? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great actor too. Sean, Sean's a huge fan of those uh, Fallout games. I played the first Fallout back. Oh, in. Matt Berry's in it too. He's the voice of the robot. It's awesome. Yeah, he is good. He is good. Uh, I played it, uh, the first Fallout one. I played in like '98. Uh, I remember because yeah. I was playing it when Michelle was pregnant with Aiden, and I loved the game, but I never got around to playing Fallout two or three or four. Oh, well, and see, so I, they, I saw the first episode. And I didn't feel lost at all. You know, just you, they stayed true to the. Uh, let yourself go with the premise, and it's a really fun show. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, and there's a lot of dark humor, and that's the other thing. People are got to you got to be prepared because it's 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 kind of scary at times, you know. But it's full of all this dark humor, just like the game. You'll be laughing. The next thing you know, you'll jump because mm -hmm. they're they're going to get you. Sounds like fun. And Sounds the main guy, uh, the guy who plays the ghoul, what's his name? There? Walter. Yeah, Walter. Um, Walter Groggins. Walter Groggins. I heard. I heard that they. So they don't have any of the characters from the game in the show. Well, it's like it, it's. Well, that's not true. Let's not give anything that's away. I mean. That's that's. I don't know that it's true. That's that, that, that's not true. It's basically like each game starts with basically an overall story arc, and they're set in different parts of the country. Okay. This movie starts just like a game. You've got your, your main character that you that would be you in the game, and you know the overall story arc. You know she has to leave the vault like they all do for some reason, for and, some she's, reason. and she's got to do something. And she picks up followers and people on the way to help her, and picks up enemies on the way to. Well, I was going to say what. And there's little side quests that go on, and that's yeah. where the real fun of the game and this story is, because that overall thing that's going to be a whole season to get to the end, that's right? Awesome. It, I like it. I'd heard the dog was in it. There's a dog. There's each, a dog. Each version of Fallout has a dog. This one has a dog. 
Oh, the dog's I love, great. I love movies with dogs. Yeah, the dog's great. Um, yeah, speaking of movies with dogs, why is it every time there's a movie about a dog, it's got to be a tearjerker? I just saw this long, like, five-minute trailer with Wally Wahlberg. Uh, it's And he's, like, running some – it's, like, his last chance to do this 400-mile global – Marathon oh, with yeah, the dog, and yeah. um, well, you appreciate this one because this one the dog just kills giant bugs and things like that. Uh, yeah, um, I did like see dog, right? uh, Kung Fu Panda Four. I saw that with my son this weekend. I have seen a few of those. I guess um, those they're cute. Is it still Jack Black's voice. Yep, Jack there Black and um, Dustin Hoffman. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a. It was a. You know what's really cute about those movies is is um, they just do a really good job of of making you feel empowered, even if you you know you, you might consider yourself a little clumsy or a little this or a little that. And that character that Jack Black plays, which I believe is Poe, is all of those things. He's frumpy, he's goofy, he's not the brightest. He's it takes him a while to figure things out a little bit. You know, but when it matters, he comes through. And I think that's just such a cool way to, you know, let yeah. kids get into into movies. And I was in a theater with a bunch of parents and then a bunch of uh, little kids that, you know, were just so happy seeing this goofy little panda roll around and, and lay the smack down on some bad guys. That's right. And uh, I think I could be wrong, but I feel like I'm pretty sure the voice of uh, – is his name Ian McShane? Are you guys familiar oh, yeah, with him? I yeah. think he's like the the bad guy in this. That he's such a great actor, you guys. He's one of the true, like, in my opinion, he's one of the greats. And he had his own show with Black Flag. Right? Oh, Black Flag! I don't know. I know he was yeah, like the Black the Flag Western. They, they, they canceled. Yeah, he was on like. What was that Western he was in with uh, Timothy Oliphant? Uh, Deadwood? I love Deadwood. He's, uh, you know, he's like... Um, American Gods. American Gods, yeah. And Sexy Beast. Sexy Beast. Yeah, so, Ian McShane, yeah. He's he's fantastic. I loved him in... Um, I loved him in uh, Deadwood. Though that's still... That series, the way they ended it, list of horrible ways to end the series. Well, but you got a movie. That still didn't end it. <laughs> they just teased me with an ending. So well, like, yeah, they kind of did. Like, I don't know. Hey, so anyway, what's going on over here, guys? Oh, let's see. It looks like there's a lot of shares. Thank you guys for being here. It's awesome, awesome, awesome. So we are just... Uh, Got a couple of new followers. Thank you, guys. Thank you all for being here. As you look at the top of my head, um, so yeah, we've we've talked about Fallout. Did we get through all of our questions? We did because we also talked about Civil War. Yes, somebody brought it up too. Was what? How, why was it a twenty fourth biggest film opening? We kind of talked about that. Yes, yeah. that's interesting. Very very interesting. Yeah. Now I did hear that a two four. Those guys have been. Um, for the most part, putting out pretty cool stuff. If it says A24 on it, I, I'm intrigued. Me too. Um, I, I don't feel like everything they've done has been great, but I feel like a lot of their stuff has been very cool. Yeah. Um, that being said, I've, I've started to hear grumblings that they're going to put out uh, instead of putting out these kind of indie films, a lot of indie horror films that they've been doing that have relatively small budgets, but they're kind of a niche mm -hmm. horror film, mm -hmm. that they're going to slow down with some of that, and they're going to start trying to find bigger movies and putting, which is kind of a shame, but you understand that's the market, you know, where they could put in, make two or three of these movies that I've been enjoying, mm -hmm. put that money and make one big movie like... Um, the one that you saw, Civil War. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's true or not, but I've heard from a couple of different people that it is, in fact, something they're considering changing their model so that they can do that. I don't know what the budget was on Civil War. It was higher. 
I don't know if it was high, but I, I can't imagine. I mean, you know, those two, Kirsten Dunn, yeah, I'm, her and her husband are actually, you know, I mean, he's hanging out with Scorsese now, you know, so he's no slouch anymore. So I would imagine that the budget was pretty decent. You know, one cool thing about A24 is they've kind of been making stars. Yeah. Um, they've been taking small movies that have done well and, and built and making, you know, pretty good actors. Mm -hmm. Um, not that they weren't talented before, but giving them a place to showcase that talent. Mm -hmm. And, and reputation being a good production house to work with. Too. I heard that during the, uh, the writer's strike, uh, they were exempted. Oh. Because their policies were already in line with what they were, being, were asking for. Well, well, that's awesome. What about, um, so they... I don't know if you guys did. You guys see the movie X that they did? It's it's a few years now, and now there's been two or three spinoffs from it from that main character. X. It's called X. No, it was movie. a horror film that was basically about a group, a van full of of adult film stars in the '70s, rent this like house on this farm, and then they're hunted by something. But I will tell you this. I mean, it's not. It, was, it kind of reminded me of, of Texas Chainsaw Massacre in a way. Mm -hmm. But what the the thing that I thought was really brilliant about the movie was how um, how detailed they were about making you feel like you were in that time. Um, it wasn't. You know, the easiest way to do something like that is your clothes and your music. Sure. If you have licensed, you know, music, you, if you play a Skinner song, you can probably sell that you're, you're doing a movie in the 70s, right? Right. But they did a lot more, you know, they did a lot of cool things with the, the drinks that the kids had, the paint that they used, the vehicles. And um, I'm not saying that they did anything too um, outrageous. I mean, there's a lot of filmmakers that do that. But for a very, very low budget horror film, it felt like a it felt like you were there. And that's something that I have to admit, I admired a lot about it. Shouldn't be surprised. You know, like I said, those guys do do pretty good movies, but yeah. you know, yeah. X. X. Yeah. I mean, if you, yeah. I, if you like horror movies and this is pretty much a straight, yeah. straight horror film, yeah. yeah, you know? So, so I just looked it up and apparently, uh, cannibal Holocaust and deadliest home videos, were the first sort of found footage movies. Okay. Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah. And I remember the Deadliest Home videos. They would, they were available for rental when I was a kid. Okay. And they were like faces of death type stuff. Okay. But they were real. They were produced. Uh huh. But they were marketed as though they were real. So that makes sense. But the, the Blair Witch was the first one really to be commercially successful and to get a wide release. You know, and then, I, and then they list uh, Paranormal Activity oh, yeah, and Cloverfield. Yeah. That was a huge one. Yeah, so those, was, yeah, yeah, those movies blew things out yeah, of the water. Yeah. I remember Cloverfield blowing things out. Cloverfield wasn't cheap. It was you know, a <clears> size <throat> budget that some of the movies were like, no. Oh, yeah, and what was the other one, Cloverfield and Paranormal, Paranormal Activity? Activity? Yeah, now Paranormal Activity, I, I believe they made that movie for fifteen grand. Yeah, yeah, probably. And I think they were shooting that with GoPros. Yeah, they, they were doing <laughs> full know? bits, and it worked, man. <laughs> but started a franchise, it's still going. Well, that's where, like, sometimes maybe we get too hung up on CGI. And sometimes, you know, yes, yeah, sometimes good stories. My Some of my... I would say one of my all-time favorite movies, like literally of all time, is Rear Window. Alfred sure, Hitchcock's sure. Rear Window. Sure. And 95% of that movie is told from some guy's living room. Yep. You know? <laughs> so. Uh, you don't get much better script writers than Hitchcock. No. He's a master storyteller. Right. Now, did you guys ever see the Hitchcock movie? Rear Window? No, no. The the movie was called Hitchcock. It came oh. out about in late 2012. The superhero one? No, 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 no. no, no. no. It's about I know what you're talking about. But I, 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 uh, I Anthony seen. Hopkins played Hitchcock. I haven't seen it. But that okay. It would be great to see. I it. think you would really enjoy I'm it. Sure no, would. I'm no, sure no, you no, would. I'm sure you would too. I don't think I saw it. No. So Anthony Hop Hopkins plays Hitchcock. Awesome. And he's, you know, he's older in the movie. It starts out with him, and he's pissed because. People are 
talking about north by northwest and they're like oh the master of suspense woo, you know and he's sitting in the tub with his little tray in front of him and he's reading the paper and he's just a grumpy old man you know he's just (laughs) mad and he's like they don't they don't respect me anymore they don't think you know i'm not i'm not the king anymore i've got to do something so uh, his secretary brings in all of these books for him to read, and he's just, she can hear him just throwing them against the wall. Throw him, he's like, this is garbage. This is trash. <laughs> Somehow he finds the story of um, that crazy guy that was killing his mom. He killed his mom and made the furniture out of a piece. Well, it, it ends up being psycho, but it's, but it's it's based on a real killer. I'm trying oh. to remember his name. He was in Wisconsin. Tom something, I think. Okay. Anyway, it's great because the bulk of the movie is about how Hitchcock is going to make Psycho. And it talks about all the stuff he goes through, all the stuff he's dealing with with the actresses. You know, how they're back in the day they were in contracts, so sometimes you had to use people you didn't want to because the studio was like, look, wait, she owes us a movie. Get her in it. You know, and he's like, I don't want her. She's not blonde. You know, and it, it's <laughs> Hitchcock was a huge, like, huge like into blonde women and his wife who was like his greatest supporter she was like one of his editors and just a you know she was right there with him you know helping him along the way real cheer a real champion for him and uh but she had to live with the fact that he he had wandering eyes and uh so that's a big part of it but it's really a great story about how this guy made psycho and how it made him bigger than he ever was. Sure. So if you get a chance, it's definitely that worth like watching. One, it's it's oh, fun. It it's bet. fun. It sounds great. All right. Let's see. We're doing pretty good here. Anybody else got anything you want to discuss? Any ideas? Anything that – what are we going to see this week, guys? Any recommendations? I know we talked about Shogun last week. Well, yeah. Monkey Man's on my list. I might make it. Chad wants to go see Civil War, so I'm going to go see that. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah, uh, my wife is traveling, so I may watch this stuff on TV instead. So definitely going to go back to Shogun. We, I've been watching that with my wife. I, I didn't really watch the first Shogun, and it feels like a lot of people are nostalgic for that. Oh no! Well, they're, they're I saw the first one, uh, but I read the book before that. Yeah, I read and, the book, and uh, and this is a great series. I think you're going to like Monkey Man. They're doing a great job. It's not exactly the same, and it shouldn't be. No, I need to finish Fallout. Yeah, I think I think that your calling is going to be Monkey Man. Monkey that's, Man. That's a little bit of all the stuff you love, you know. What's it, What service is that on again? That oh, that's at the theater. theater. Oh, that's at the theater. Yeah. Wow. yeah. All right. Yeah, so. But, yeah. So, anyway. I want to thank everybody that hung out with us. You guys are awesome. I'll probably be on live later too, but I just want to thank you guys for being here. I always like to get uh, other perspectives, and I like having the guys around. It's nice to hear their opinions, and they get to see things that I don't. So thank you guys so very much. Please make sure you follow. Um, Make sure you follow. We do stuff like this all the time, and I'm putting up videos all the time. You guys are awesome. Have a wonderful night, and we'll talk soon. Take care, everybody. Good night. Uh, Good night. There's a Scott Pilgrim demo feature playing. Oh.